And we're live, Clive. <laughs> you can't scare Sam me. in a van with a man. Rude. <laughs> Rude. So, those of you that are new to the channel, this is Kira. Um, Kira's partner's Lee Marvin. I have a playlist with interviews where they're both telling their life stories. Um, we're not in a van, are we? No. You said that because you knew I was going to blow you up, didn't you? Yeah, you were going to blow me up. We're in my car, <laughs> all right, but Sam in a van, Sam in a car. Um, Kira's going to ask me some questions today, are you not? Yeah. I'm going to ask her one first because uh, I like to throw stuff into the mix. Oh. Um, and I like putting her on the spot. Mm. Been struggling lately with your mental health. Most definitely. Just explain that for people because like I've just said to you, you know, sometimes you see other people, you know, in your story where you are and it's amazing and everyone says that. But the facts are that, yeah, you've come a long way. However, you have some absolutely tossed days. Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday, day before, <clears throat> excuse me, past couple of weeks, horrible. Like I'm living outside my own ladder, horrible. Are you settled on your meds at the minute? They're not messing you about? I'm settled, but I think my levels are going down, so they're going to have to be adjusted. That's what happens when you're on a certain dose for a certain amount of time with bipolar. It stops working? Yeah, it stops working. It stops giving me that thing to my brain. So that'll be something that we'll do. We'll contact the psychiatrist. They'll check my blood levels. They'll know whether it'll have go up. Probably go up now to another 100. Do you know so, what? Um, I'm going to mention this again <laughs> because we have said this and I'm all for it, me. Kieran has got a diagnosis of bipolar. Bipolar for me is just some political correctness yeah. bullshit word that was invented. Manic depressive. That's it. You know, one week I come and see this lass. The brew's always good. <laughs> she can make tea. However, I've seen a proper low, like, on the yeah. floor. And I've seen a manic. A manic depressive is just... It's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's what's happened to me yesterday. So, well, Sunday, got up and was with baby, cleaning, playing, and then come the afternoon, boom. And that's what's been up with me the past couple of days. I'm trying to get myself back up, or even just halfway. So I've had a couple of days of being manic, and now these couple of days of being really long. Obviously, today's a better day because... Uh... Well, obviously, it's always a better day when you come and see me. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. Um, if you want to ask me a few questions now. Are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Do prisoners cry when they're being sentenced? I've actually done a video on that. However, um, yeah, they do get upset. There is a few uh, that maybe won't let on. When somebody comes back and they've received a long sentence, uh, the nursing staff would ask them in reception certain questions because obviously there's a concern. If somebody's gone away, they've got a life sentence or whatever. Um, you know, it is, it is a risky time for people. What about I, like prisoners that have been in gangs and like gang wangers? Do they cry like the tough man? Yeah, of course they do. Do you know what a lot of lads have told me? Um, people have messaged and said, you know, damn right you cry, you get behind your door, nobody's there, I'm a single cell, blubber my eyes out for weeks or whatever, you know, miss your family, miss whatever. Sometimes it can be weeks before it settles in. Um, there is some people genuinely who maybe know what's coming. Mm. You know, if you take some of the big, really big trials or whatever, um, you know, if someone's murdered someone, you know, they've gone guilty or whatever, you know, they know what's coming. I don't know whether that's going to prepare anyone. Um, well, they're only crying for themselves, really, though, aren't they? Do you reckon they're actually crying for what they've done? Probably most people. You ask Marv, it's, if you get caught, isn't it? That's, that's when the realisation sets in. Um... I, th I think a lot of people, the, the ones who I've seen upset the most, you know, it is a personal thing. I would never 
you know, name names yeah. or whatever. But it's them that are on big trials where, you know, if, if we take the Cregan trial, two, two lads involved with that were on the healthcare for a long time because obviously in prison, they all started falling out. So they separated them lads, yeah. So we had two. Now their fortunes changed, but, you know, one of them was looking at getting 30 plus years, maybe, and the other one was looking at getting out. As it mm -hmm. happened, it reversed. Yeah, I know. So you do see, you know, there's obviously a lot of emotion and stuff like that. It's some, honestly, it's one of them feelings. I, I have had nightmares about getting lifed off, you know, and you wake up in an absolute state. I can't even imagine it. So, yeah, they do okay. get upset. <clears throat> Do many visitors often get caught with drugs? Many visitors get caught with drugs. It is a thing, prison procedures. Um, strange ways, like a lot of prisons. Well, Forest Bank even. Forest Bank had a dog that was amazing. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the dog. I did know the two handlers. Uh, there was a 40 grand bounty put on that dog's head for anybody who could kill it. That's because it, it was successful. They stink them dogs though, why do they stink? Well, strange ways dogs, I've never been to Follies Bank. Because, they, you know, they, they have spaniels, don't they? Spaniels yeah. have really good noses. Uh, they, they like working dogs, so the lads, you know, they'll, they'll have them out in the grounds running about, they have them at home. They're like a family pet. Um, you know, they only work 20 minutes at a time or something like that, but they take them out. £40,000 so, to kill a dog, that's terrible. You know, a lot of people used to complain about the dog smelling. They're working animals, they'll take them out, they'll take them in marshland, in woods and stuff like that. They're not baffing them every day. You know, they are a working dog at the end of the day. They do get looked after. Here's the thing, if you get stopped going through the procedure, like coming in and, you know, the dog sits on you or whatever, people, you know, they're, they're not back and they get banned for a period of time. If you get into the establishment and in on visits and get caught with a parcel, you know, you, you're you looking at years. If if that parcel, let's just say you and Marvin are sat there, you pass him a parcel. If the officers get that, on film you're seen, mm. you know, taking that parcel out and passing it in, you're looking at time. It's not so easy to get convictions. Um, Visits went down, Nick, before I left Strange Ways. You know, staff weren't on the ball. I saw, not saw, I'd been on visits, walked on, when a parcel had been passed, the lad I knew, he was a big lad, way bigger than me, and the staff were scared to approach him. So he received a parcel, yeah? Downstairs, when you come off visits, he should have been escorted down, and I was down there searching. They just sent him down on his own. So on his way down, he'll have put that parcel as high up as he could, yeah. And I did know him. I knew him well. I got on with him really well. Yeah. He, he, he knew I were going to strip him. There was a lass with me. I said to her, you know, there should be two of us. However, if you want to stay there. So I went in. Now, I'm putting myself at risk there. There's yeah, a prisoner. He could say I've touched him up or done anything. However, I knew the lad. <coughs> yeah. He took all his clothes off. Bollocky buff. Bent o'er. And says, can you see out Samworth? I says, I can. It's not pleasant. Would you kindly put your clothes back on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, is we talked about strip searching the other day. This is different. And I sent him back to the wing. But if you do get caught, I, I've been in fights with prisoners who have had something in their hand that they've received and they'll fight for their lives. Because not only are the visits going to get banned, you know, if that's a loved one, they're getting locked up. Yeah. So. Well, I remember when I went to see Marvin in Buckley Hall and uh, Buckley Hall is... There's no security in Brooklyn. No, of course there isn't. Explain why. Well, I'll explain why. Yeah. Is, is it Cat D now? Cat D. Right, so it's an open prison. Oh, no, I don't think it was Cat D at the time. Was it Cat C, maybe? Yeah, it was Cat C at the time. However, you know, it's needs must. Uh, the, the lower security and obviously staffing levels. And then there's the other thing with officers. This were really bad, this, when I was at Forest Bank. There was a uh, boxer. Uh, I did get on with the lad. We'd had him down the block, however... He thought his missus were up to no good and he levered her on visits. Oh my I mean, God. I mean, levered her. Five staff there, including three big lads, stood behind the counter, just pressed the bell and watched her get levered. What a knob. So, 
Yeah, so when I went to book it all, we obviously, like you just said, there's no security. And there was these two young girls. There was no way old enough to even get in a jail. And I knew they looked shifter. They got caught with big parcels of cocaine. Oh my God, I felt so sorry for him. You could tell they'd been coerced into it because of how young they were. It was terrible. I was sat there in amazement. I've never, Mavin's never asked me to bring anything in. When I used to go on a visit and I'd sit there with a the dog, I'd shit myself like he had a parcel on me. You automatically just get scared. We, the dog, they used to run the dogs by staff. Uh, not Like I said, it can only work 20 minutes at a time. So a dog, I, I don't know. Could probably work two or three times a day. Maybe, maybe if it was working visits in the afternoon, twenty minutes, twenty minutes off, twenty minutes, something like that. Yeah. But they used to run them by staff now and again. For me, uh, you asked me this earlier. Drug test staff. Oh, definitely. I. Especially do you know what? I was now, amazed when you said you don't get drug well, tests. Well, you know, yet. get over it. You're working in prison. It's supposed to be a professional environment. If you're taking drugs. Then you're in the wrong job, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, well, yeah let, let me tell you, Go pretty on. disgusting. I don't know whether you know this. Oh, um, right. You said Marvin never... I, why would you ask a loved one to take something in? That's it. When the it. staff, you know, they've caught people taking stuff out of babies' nappies and disgusting. things like that. Disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah? However, the worst, and I, I'll do this in as a uh, subtle way, and we had a woman... <laughs> Uh, of some maturity, let's say the lad was over 40, a Cat A prisoner, his mother uh, brought a phone in, yeah? The phone was um, deposited in her front bum, shall we say. Oh my God, you know, mother. On camera, she took it out, passed it in. <coughs> it was on camera and he deposited it. There was no nicking. Um, there was some debate as as whether they could actually ban her, even though this is a Cat A prisoner, because there was no evidence. Because, you see, once he took it and it was hidden away... You can't prove where it come from. That's terrible. Well, you can't prove what it is. It could be anything. So, um, yeah. How could you do that to your own mother? There yeah. you go. Can you read? Do you want me to read it? Do you not carry I'm, on? Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking, love. Carry on. I'm joking. I'm joking. What have prisoners got to do when trying to be recatheterised? It should happen naturally. Um, do you know what? When I get some of these people back, Ray and the like, recategorization, right, it's not my speciality, all this sort of stuff, but after a period of time, someone should be eligible for um, recategorization. Everyone who comes into prison, other than Cat A's, which the Home Office, the police, multiple agencies, the government deem Cat A prisoners highest risk, everyone starts as a Cat B. So if you get caught for drink driving, you go to Strange Ways, you're Cat B. Once you get sentenced. I won't go to Strange Ways, I'm a woman. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah? You would be a cat B. Once you were sentenced, you'd probably be cat D. Open conditions, you're getting a small sentence. Recategorization should happen automatically. A lot of people are having to apply now because during lockdown, you know, things have got so far behind. So people who should have been maybe entitled to cat D two years ago are still in cat B establishment. There's a lot of problem within the prison service and has been for a lot of years. People moving about. It used to happen really smoothly so if we got four prisoners from birmingham and they got four manchester prisoners allocations there used to be ex-prison officers who worked in an office job they were still prison officers but not on the landings didn't move people so you know as space has become available now getting to cat d is very difficult um but it, it, it should be a natural process i don't think marvin's ever been to cat d I don't think they'd like Cat, Cat D's right. Someone like Marvin, not a good place. He, you know, a lot of lads prefer to be in secure environments. Mm. Cat D's, although they're open prison, you know, uh, I know people who've been assaulted, badly battered in Cat D's by people from outside. Yeah. So lads have got in, battered someone, and got out. It's that easy. You have your own key to the cell, don't you? A lot of them are left open. However, 
um, if you if you just you know somebody who minds their own business, you're not into drugs, you know you're in for a minor offence, you'll be fine. If you are well known, yeah, you know, if you're from Manchester and you got some gang involvement or Liverpool, mm. you got a cat D. You're possibly going to meet people from different yeah, areas, course. which could cause you problems. I don't know if I like to be in cat D though. You know when they give you own leave, I don't want to go back. You can see why people have gone. Like you go home for the weekend and then. You're going back to jail. Doesn't make sense to me. Dave, white collar worker, yeah, who went to Cat D. He yeah. was in Strange Ways three weeks went to Cat D. He said he preferred to do his time. Yeah, that's it, he, that's what he, I'm saying. He, even as a first timer in prison, on the detox wing at Strange Ways, he wasn't detoxing, they put him on there and he got a cleaner's job. He'd have preferred to stay in closed environment. If he says Cat D was a waste of time, it's just frustrating. Yeah, because you like. A stone throw here. However, yeah. you know, it is it is a necessary or should be a necessary step for people who've been a long time in order to get them yeah. going outside establishment and home visits yeah. and the like. To get so it's it's flipping a coin. Okay. Are there many incidents of prison staff being held hostage by inmates? Um No. Next. No, I'm kidding. Right. No, there isn't. Uh, it's classed as very serious, obviously. There's been a fair few civilian staff taking hostage, you know, like in education type environments and that. Uh, it's next level. The possibilities now, if you take someone hostage or that if it goes to court or whatever, you could possibly end up on way more serious charges and with a bigger sentence i believe they do it in america though don't they yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna discuss this with ray gilbert 36 years he was on the unit a whole the special unit when charlie bronson as he was known then now charles salvador yeah. um took someone hostage I believe he was an art teacher and i believe he ended up getting a life sentence from that incident wow so in America they do it. I've watched it loads of times on them programmes. Anyway. Mm. Do do some inmates try to convince you of their innocence? I, I, I've met a lot of people who are innocent. They don't try and convince you, you know. You know, by the circumstances, etc. Can you uh, tell them when someone's lying, when they're saying, oh, I'm innocent? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing about prisoners, right? That um, for me, if they've been done, done somebody's done wrong to them. Like if they've been stitched up by an officer or or something similar. You know when? They, well, I did. I you know when they're telling the truth. Yeah, they they don't like injustice. So if somebody, for instance, I place someone on report. Uh, which is putting them in front of the governor and they can receive punishment for assaulting me and they didn't assault me. I'll, I'll give you a little story. You know I like little stories. Yeah, you like we had a lad, me, a lad. He was, he was an Andy lad, this tough, about your size, proper fighter. Yeah, and he ended up on healthcare one day, so... What are you doing on here? So he was talking about A-Wing and he was talking about an officer. He says, right, Miss Sam, I'm on the landing. I'm on the phone. It's dinner time. I understand that, so they're locking up. This officer uses the C word, oi, you, C, get off the phone. He says, I just ignored him, said goodbye to the missus, put it down. As I'm walking back to my cell, he stood at my cell, oi, you, you little, <laughs> get in the cell. And as I went in the cell, he pushed me, Mr. Samworth. You know, I, I, I called him a, 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 a fat C, yeah? <laughs> um, Sounds and, like and that's and, and that's done, you know, no no big deal. I'll take that on the chin. He says so he comes back, Mr. S. Yeah. So they're all banged up now. They haven't served meals. Work's come back, so he's come back, so he's got a few of his boys there. So he steps in the cell. I know this officer this officer was quite a tough officer, but he weren't nice, he was a bully. He says so, he's come in the cell, I've got off the bed and he's punched me in the face, yeah. So He's punched me in the face, Mr. S, not one of my teeth out. I've punched him back, they've oh jumped on me. God. Me, he says, I'll take them, Miss Samworth. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't mind. I, I got a good one in. 
I says, right, so why are you here? He says, because they took me down the segregation unit for assaulting him. And when I got down there, I said, I'm going to kill myself. That's why I'm on health care. He says, but here's, here's why I'm pissed, why I'm pissed off. He says, go on. He says, he's nicked me, uh, not for punching him, for biting him. He's punched me in the face. He's got tooth marks in his hand. He's not my tooth out. And he said, I bit him. Oh, if the nicking, if the nicking said I punched him in the face, I'd go, yeah, I punched him in the face, guff. I'd take it on the chin. He says, however, I didn't bite him and I'm not having that. What do I do? I says, how about when you go down for your nicking and the governor says, you know, what have you got safe? He's tell him what you've just told me. Yeah. He says, really? I says, why not? Just said, tell him, I'll, I'll, I did punch him, I'll take that. But I didn't bite him. I'm not having that. Yeah. You know, I was, I've never bit anyone in my life. So he did it. He come back to us. How do you get on? He says, the governor gave me a caution. That is a squeeze. The governor, the governor was the number one governor at the time. A man of integrity. Yeah. He told his story. The governor says, you know, um, I'm going to ask you to step outside. Five minutes deliberation. Come back in. The governor give him a it's caution. because he told the truth. Well, the governor, the governor knew the officer. Yeah, and the governor sort of thought, right, he's down. He's still, he's still, he's still got a guilty, mm. a caution, but that's the least you're gonna get. Look at. So why are you gonna remit so to punch him? So to go back to your biting? thing, go on. You, you know when prisoners telling the truth. Yeah. And a lot of them will hold their hands up to stuff if they've done it. Yeah. Can you wear your own clothes slash jewelry in prison? Jewelry, right? Jewelry. Um, Again, I, I was never a reception screw, never worked down there. Uh, there is s s some jewellery, expensive jewellery, taking off people. Uh, depending on the value of the watch, in the past they've let people have Rolexes. Stop it, in jail. Got, yes, that have got Mate, you're just putting that a target have, on yeah, someone's head. Exactly, bag. exactly. Um, so, certain items you can have, certain items you can't. Um, I, I weren't really up on that, but, you know. Not stupid. I mean, I remember when he was being wild in trainers and strangers and you couldn't have eye tops. Prove your ankle. Why is that? I don't know. Did did they have plates in soles? You know, as prison officers, we used to go through a metal detector in the morning. Yeah, every morning at Strange mm -hmm. Ways. And the boots I used to wear, Magnums, they've got a, a plate in the sole. Some rock ports have plates rock in the sole. Rock ports, I've not seen yeah, rock ports. Since I was a kid. So you had to take them off. So any trainers, if, if they had plates in or something similar, which some do, then you won't no, be allowed them. No, I don't them. think these have plates the, There is a reason, you know, there is a reason for obvious things that this stuff you couldn't have. Our prisoners watch when they're on association with each other. Our prisoners watched on association. Dead simple question that. When I was on K-Wing, staff were always on the landing, um, always. If I wanted to go to the toilet for a wee, I'd tell my mate because if something happened, he, he knows I, I'm not there. Mm. If he went off the landing to make us a brew, he'd tell me, yeah? And we used to look after each other. So, yeah, healthcare, when I worked healthcare, yep. Yeah. Well, however, however, however just hang on. Come on. Bottom jail, so top jail, bottom jail. Top jail was called top jail, so it was top of hill. And they got some wings, yeah? Bottom jail, it's called bottom jail, so it was bottom of the hill. Mm. It's that simple. You used to go down to bottom jail, the staff, a lot of lazy staff, they were never on the landings. Yeah? Uh, a lot less violence down there. However, if I was working a weekend, say, on B wing or C wing, I'd be on the landings talking to lads and you, you wouldn't see a member of staff all day. Nice and if they did, they'd all be sat in a sterile area, which is a safe place. Which I wonder why they do the training to be a um, prison officer and then actually just not want to do the job. Why is the point? People just get complacent and very lazy. I used to hate working. Well, I didn't hate it because I just talked to lads. Yeah, A, B, C, D wing. If I worked on there, I'd be talking to lads. You know, you find someone, I do Mr. S. There were plenty of lads I knew from K wing and that and healthcare, and you go and chat to them. The staff would just be, you know. There is a lot of a lot of lazy people in the job because you don't have to produce anything. Yeah. It's not a productive job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Have you the, ever been assaulted in off the inmates? That's not a question that's down there. Yeah, uh, uh, quite a lot. Really? Um, private sector, um, you were pretty much on your own. It, it was a tough gig. Uh, I didn't know any better. I'd never worked anywhere else. We had a lad who come from public sector prison when I was in private sector on our training. Nice lad, he worked in Isle of Wight, 25 years. There's three prisons there, he'd worked at all three. <laughs> I think they used to rotate their staff. So he was an experienced lad, he lasted less than one morning. I saw him 10 o'clock, so it's my first shift, his first shift, we're walking. I says, you all right? He says, yeah, I'm handing my keys in. <laughs> I, I didn't know what he meant, he'd gone. Proper tough gig. You're on your own a lot of time. Do you know, I don't think I've ever asked you this. What made you get in to being a prison officer? Why, why did you want to be a prison officer? Kevin. Kevin Sobrolski. <laughs> I have mentioned him before. Oh, you're blaming someone else. Soski, my mate. Soski. No, Soski, my mate in Sheffield. Tat tattooist now. Lab 13 Studios. His cousin. Knocked about with him. Good lad. We got on. Played rugby like me, a lot in common, in prison service a long time, says Sambo, you'd love it. Go and do it, you'd love it. Why did you choose to be a screw and not a police officer? Uh, I did think about joining the police force. Uh, my uncle, Don, <laughs> said, said if you do that job, none of us will talk to you. True. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay, there's a question down there. Do the prison um I forgot what I was gonna say have much to do with the police right okay yeah do officers have much of a relationship with the police they have d depending on the category um like strange ways forest bank lot of prisons they have a police liaison officer now employed by the police works in the prison so for instance you know Manchester has quite a big gang culture yeah that guy will be working in there and looking at things, building intelligence and stuff. Believe it or not... I never knew that. They build a lot of intelligence in prisons. It's not a secret. See, why Everyone didn't you knows. do that job? Because you're nosa. So you'd probably got it Well, it's a specialist job in police. You know, there's only one. I don't know how many people are in Manchester Police, but one guy worked there. So, um, I... I never thought about working in security because a lot of that time is sort of away from the landings and stuff like that and I'd have just been bored shitless, that's not me. Yeah. I like working with people, that yeah. was my speciality. Because you speciality. like talking, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let you ask me one more now. So I'll I'm... ask as many as I want, thanks, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> right, I'm going to ask you this one about healthcare, where's it going? Do healthcare staff look after the inmates like they would a law-abiding citizen? So do they look after him like a nurse would in the hospital? Right, okay. So, the healthcare. Um, proper nurses, we have proper nurses, which are, um, you know, the nurses, I, I, don't, I love nurses, I'm not being condescending now, but we had head nurses who were mental health nurses, and we had the nurses that like hold you on and put plaster on your knee. And again, I love, all my managers and all the nurses I worked with, they were good. So they actually worked, at one bit they worked for the NHS and then various health authorities put bids in. So they they just did their job within the confines of the people we were locking up. So if someone was on a free officer unlock, you need a free staff to let that nurse in to dress a wound or to interview someone, you know, the mental health nurses, if they're interviewing people. So they do exactly the same job. Very frustrating for a lot of them, particularly the lasses who work with mental health because, you yeah, know, if someone is, sense. you don't have the same facility in hospital, you can't give people drugs. If they choose not to take them, you know, giving people drugs by injection, very few and far between. So people, mental illness would come really yeah, unwell it and, it, and you imagine you're there your passion is looking after people who are, are mentally unwell have mental illness and you can't you're limited mm. so they do for me as an officer i love that job you know uh never took anything personal i got assaulted quite a few times on there um i couldn't imagine you getting weighed <sighs> what people have to understand and and this is 
you know, never lose the fight. You know, Marvin will tell you this. You can do what you like. You can employ university graduates. You can employ the best businessmen. You know, you can do whatever you like. However, the business, the lads who are getting locked up, who are prisoners, they don't change. They're not going to change. Yeah. So, if someone's pissed off because he ain't got a phone call or his phone number ain't been put on or he's missed his dinner or some officer is, you know, taking the piss and stitching him up, if it's you in front of him or me... It's going to crack you. Yeah, you're going to get What did your used to say, though, if you come home and be assaulted? Serves you right. Shut <laughs> No, she didn't. I'd want to march right down to that prison, <laughs> mate. Obviously, you know. But, yeah, on the healthcare, everyone did the best job possible. As an officer, I tried to get people out every day, get them out as much as possible. That's what I wanted to do. I can't think of anything worse than being having mental illness, mentally unwell, and being locked up all day. So, yeah. the best Adds job possible. To it, doesn't it? it does, yeah. Have you done? I suppose so, considering you're up around. I, I do. I would love a cup of tea, yeah. So, um, exciting news coming up. I'm not going to break it today. We do have a phone number now in the pinned comment on this and in the description. If you want to message the channel, you know, if you've got a question. To ask anyone. Yeah, you can text now. You can text that question. You don't have to email. The email's still there. Um, yeah, all good. Thank you, love. You're Thanks for being honest as well. Always. I'll, I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>